What's up, y'all? It's me, Tasha C. And in this particular video, y'all will be reviewing Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Season 8, Episode 2. Ugh! Excuse me, y'all. I don't know why I'm ready to go to bed. But, yes, I do. I just realized that actually it's one of those days that I'm ready to go to bed at midnight, almost. And, um, due to the fact I'm still adjusting to daylight saving time like probably most of us are. So that into adjusting an extra hour, you know, some of us might be sleepy as hell and, you know, <laughs> whatever, depending on our schedule and stuff. But anyway, okay. So yeah, let's get into this episode. First, I want to discuss the whole Judy and Yandy situation or how Yandy is basically being investigated as being extremely inappropriate even though, like I said, you know, it was a little touchy-feely. She could have gave the baby on herself. But still, even that was over-exaggerated. And, um, so we got Judy. She talking to Mendeecee. She feels how, basically, Yanni's appropriate behavior. And she shows some of the Instagram photos, which basically was a one-piece. You, you just see the side, basically, of her leg in a one-piece bathing suit. One a uh, one pants suit where it kind of it just splits up to the knee and uh some other but the the post that she had was showing was nothing inappropriate and i know Nan yandy to sometimes where you know i mean it ain't like she was sitting here walking around thong shit all day but i never recalled or nor have we seen her wearing stuff that is usually you know in a you know like you know what i mean you know, which it, it, inappropriate, nor is she wearing stuff that completely comes up to here, which she always, you know, is completely covered with, like, to turtleneck and stuff like that, and, you know, gloves all the time, whatever. Um, so, it seemed like there's a reason where now the sun is interesting that here's Judy somewhat coming at, at Yandy. Well, you know, at first, even the side where Andy, you know, when they were still somewhat semi-cool with Samantha and Mom, remember Judy kind of felt like she was back taking their side, or whatever, instead of, you know, being there for her, or whatever, so now it's interesting, consider that Yandy, like, last season, was all her husband, and still my husband, you know, custom-made shirts, jogging shoes, pants, socks, you know, the whole nine yards, of letting everybody know that, you know, Medici is her husband, you know, <laughs> and, uh, but now, the son, it's like, now she's inappropriate and crossing the line, so she tell me this is where he feels offended. And the way, like, the way of she's going, like, you know, my, he's already going through a hard time, blah, 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 and all this stuff, and she's being inappropriate. And it's like this. Now, there are some people when you, you, you're in jail and, you know, that you hear some stories, you know, that some of them, like, you know, they're automatically you're thinking, like, if some people into jail, some of them, that they're already, you know, about to get on with their cellmate or mates. You see what I'm saying? And, uh, well, place, but you also, let's be real, too, there's also stories where, I mean, there has been, it's been I have even, I actually heard more stories about this, news reports about this than even, like, say, in the women's, um, um, you know, prison and stuff, but you have heard about in the male prisons that they were fucking some, you know, you know, even sometimes the one dude be having at least two female you know, CEOs up there, one of them pray about they about to beat each other's ass, because one of them got to get the cell phone and all this other stuff, but for, uh, for the other, uh, for them, when they just fight over this man, he up there, get, you know, getting, uh, free internet and all, whatever else, so, I mean, that actually has happened, so for him to be feeling that Yandy is disrespecting him and stuff, it's like, uh, because she can come and you'll be like, well, who, who, who's CEO, bitch? Who's bitch you fucking in? Who's CEO? Do I need to check and make sure she ain't on your ship if they have female guards? You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. Uh, because now at least they're giving us the story that now Yandy, I mean, we already know Kimbella said spoke recently that she's faking blah, blah, blah. But now, all of a sudden, you got where, um, that now Yeti is considered like she popped the team just like this inappropriate behavior and I need to keep my eye on then they have a conversation like basically that I think she was rubbing his back and arms and blah blah blah. The hell? Back and arm but the way she sounded like she was back but it was just like she changed up like even her behavior even towards the guy was really uncalled for even though we all know this and kind of you can script this well we're just going what we're showing, okay? So 
there's an event in Gandhi's having, and now she's having, you know, the beauty care line. Now, I noticed that we see to see Juju, and all of a sudden, is Kim Bella coming back this season or anything at all? I know even if they say happy, where she's kind of mad at Kim Bella, that doesn't mean that, or whatever's going on with them as far as the distance. No, Kim Bella being mad at her because she's distance. All of a sudden, you know, you see Juju, and now she's even the main cast member, one of the main cast members, and then all of a sudden you don't see Kim Bella no more. And you know, when we first, we first met Kim Bella, she was at Randy when she was selling, you know, the quote, quote, when basketball wife's it was popular, and other jewelry as well, it was also one of her several businesses, okay? So, we got, you know, this guy named Jonathan, I never watched K. Michelle, so but he said he'd been there, you know, he's been like an image consultant or an star, I don't want to just step credit, and then he was talking to her, and they were talking about the whole thing with Judy, so Judy, again, they never said how she felt, I guess like on Instagram, when she has these events, this heifer is basically starting to follow her everywhere she goes, and monitors her, you know, at location, she is going to find you, okay, you ain't got even sent a location, her ass is just there now, too, because she feels that Yandy is also dressing for, Yandy just had like a two-top dress, and it, and it came down to her knees, and it fitted, but like I said, you know, this is not actually out of Yandy's thing. And the swimsuit, um, even picture, even if you were considered inappropriate, that was not actually inappropriate when she just was posing on the side. She wasn't busting open or anything, no sports or nothing that would like make it a scene creepy. Other than that, if that's the only proof that they have, what you know, like more proof should be you know, would have been spilling. You know, this Ju Miss Judy was not talking about like she's got, you know, somebody's been getting dropping dimes on her. You know, uh, she even seen this dude, here's some DMs, whether they will or not, you know, um, some guys, you, you, you know, like I said, sent the information they sell for some, some, the, it's the ex or whatever. You know, just saying is, if that's the only proof y'all had, how can you say that she's being inappropriate? You know what I mean? So she goes to the damn place and she's sitting here with a yellow bag while she pulls up and here comes uh, Judy. And Yanny's like, you know, we got to talk on the side. Like I said, Jonathan is there. Like I said, he's worked for artists such as like Missy Elliott, Little Cam, The Brat, and Clue K. Michelle. But she, he loves Mrs. New York. So they're talking. And so, so all of a sudden, uh, she pulls you aside. It's like, okay, you, you're doing too much. And all of a sudden, because she was talking to them about what's going on with the mother ball situation. Hmm. And apparently, now I mean, DC has been really been talking to her or is kind of like dissing himself. Even more, they're already distant for because and he in prison serving time, and uh, she's you know outside, you know, um, and you know what I mean outside, you know outside prison, you know, in real and free, free, you know. So um, there's already this, and all of a sudden it's just weird because like I said, it, um, um, she sure was holding us back when he did. I think about that year before when they started processing um his trial for this. And before he got the eight years. So now, um, this is happening. You know what I'm saying? So it's like all of a sudden it's like you got a problem and your proof is these Instagram photos and all this other stuff. And now they're not even saying that she's no longer accepting his calls. Except that one time she said she was, you know, pushing to the side. But any other time, there also was no mention that uh she was avoiding his calls. Okay. Man, I, I spent here about eight damn minutes on this damn thing. I'm just saying like there's no other proof to sit here and say that there's anything that's suspicious because the proof they have is not even proof, personally to me. So anyways, y'all, you know, Judy pulls aside and she get well, actually not even front of the side. She does in front of Jonathan and Judy, Judy but then, you know, you need to wear this. This is inappropriate. And it looked like a sweater, which I do agree with you, Mr. J Mr. Jonathan, about it looked like a muff of, uh, a muff is up. It looked like she sat there and stole half of Jimmy, uh, Jim Henson's, Hen uh, Henson's, Hen Jim, you know, the Muppets, or went to Sesame Street and took some of their puppets and put them all in a big ass paper spreader or some type of spreader, and decided somebody to knit that up, okay, and think she was going to wear it. I don't know what the hell it was, a big-ass blanket or something, but I'm like, what the hell, dude, you don't go somewhere and get your life, get some peace, serenity, something, because now all of a sudden you're trying to prove the capture at these events, and these guys, you have guys that serve, you know, they're trying to give you, you know, facial acne cream, all this stuff, and they just, they're just sitting there where, you know, you have, you know, they, they have pants on both off, but they're just shirtless, and she's going around saying naked men, but I'm like, okay, they, they're actually 
you know, in real life, especially not to understand when it's hot or in such places as beaches, you usually might, there's a chance you might see a shirtless man. It's not like they were sitting there rubbing in, on her or nothing like that. They were up there serving drinks and stuff, probably chocolate, you know, ch chocolate, chocolate dipped strawberries and all that, okay? But she had, and you know, Yandy's face is like, you know, you know, you, you're just going to have to leave, whatever, you know, I'm not dealing with that no more. And one of the guys came there and was like, oh, your assistant said to leave this with you. I would have took that, that, you know, I would have took that damn thing and be like, no, let me follow her quick and throw it at her head. <laughs> I'm not saying I would just put it, it, cause we all know it's a story, it's a storyline anyway, but just the fact is now she's trying to control basically what she wears and kind of semi stalk her. Maybe when she start having these spins because this is like getting into her business and stuff, you might have to have a biggest ass sign and have somebody security so that somebody can stop her and be like, you know what, don't let her through the dough, whatever her problem is, and just get the heck on. Because if she's gonna have problems in a minute, she's gonna get one of those. Amish outfits to tell her to put on shit and have her ass trying to look like a fucking pilgrim. That's what the hell next she's gonna try to put her ass in, you know, whatever, since she feels like it's inappropriate, but just the fact of offering it where now what the heck she talking about inappropriate? Heck, she's showing some shoulders. Shit. I, I mean she shouldn't sit there and wasn't covered. She didn't have a go cover her damn arms. I'm just saying that she what Yenny was was not inappropriate and even the show shoulder she wasn't that I'm just like, okay, whatever. Anyways, so, we have this scene where we got Dream Dial, she's talk, talking, and I guess DJ Self, I think, was the one who was talking about, you know, she's uh, a possible artist, and this is a safari, you know, since she's worked with people, and we see her, you know, she's rehearsing, whatever, and the song, personally, me, I'm like, mm, I'll give credit, I had a catchy song, she got receipts, she, you know, she's had a couple more, blah, 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 and came back, and she has to see the guy actually seen Facebook Live, with Kendall to Kendall to Kendall, um, who's famous for Instagram and stuff, um, as far as reviewing such as the Love and Hip Hop show, shows, whatever, uh, that's ran. So, um, he did a live, but she did a song called You Too Young to Love, and like I said, even the song she did, she, it was catchy, okay, she got some, she got some talent, okay, you know, she might, is she flirtatious, I don't know, might see some new fools, now that's what I'm saying, she's crossing the line, if that's really happening, you know, well, like I said, we don't know if it's a show, whatever, now, um, but Dream Dial, like I said, the song that she had, mm, and Safari come in, and he's looking, and he likes what he sees, and they talk on the front, he's ready to mix in business with pleasure, they go, and the trample these, trend these thing, and you know, they, you know, how you swing on the bars, and their thing, because he's like, um, basically having like a trust date or whatever, so he first was scared to go, but he eventually swing down, and you, you know, they had, you know, protection on him anyway, as far as he was gonna fall, you know, and bust, bust his head open, no shit like that, and she was scared too, talking stuff about him, be acting like a little bitch, and then she turned around, and was, you know, stop, think about it, and wait for a second, so he's like, you know, he just knows his mom is going to feel some type of way because she got the colorful hair. And I'm like, and he had mentioned that twice. He's mentioned that twice, I think, professionals or something. And we're talking about the rehearsal. You know, like I said, I personally, myself, the song was like, uh, maybe I need to take my time, but I feel like giving a fuck and actually maybe listening to her song. And I'll find out whether I like it or not. And I'm just like, okay, because what I hear, I'm like, I don't need, I just heard her song once. Oh, I forgot. You know, I don't need. <laughs> but, uh, when I heard her song, they, it was catchy as heck. I'm like, oh, this is how I can pretend to act like I can dance more for shit and salsa. That's, that's, that's what she giving me, okay? But that Dream Dial song, at least it's on the snippet that they had. I, I don't know what the hell. I was like, I was not I was not impressed. So anyways, they, like I said, they're going on a date. And he's thinking about doing, like I said, you know, the mom's going to hair. But she's like, you know, who said my mom's going to like, you know, I know how to take this week off. I know how to cover first. I know how to spread respect. So basically, they kiss and they're going to work out on this relationship. Safari so realize he's going to try this, even though she has a certain appearance and he keeps being drawn to the same type of woman, which already, I think, DJ Silk was saying, like, you know, you need to watch out because we all know how you are with the females you choose. But he's going to do this anyway, okay? So... Now, we got the Anani situation and the Mariah Lynn. Now, Mariah Lynn, it's interesting that a lot of them she had had, you know, once the time I was a hoe, and that was catchy as song, even though you, you're you bragging about the fact you were a hoe, but it was it was one of the most catchy songs I ever heard, and disrespectful at the same time to yourself. Damn, okay. You know, but 
it went and then I think she had a song called Money Done and it she said she was working on some new music. Now interesting stuff, remember we, Mar Mariah Lynn was kind of popping, whatever. And then interesting enough, when Carla B came after we see how she progressed uh past Mariah Lynn. You know, Mariah Lynn might, might be still getting but I'm just saying as far as you know, you've seen somebody who left and wasn't even on there but only what, two seasons? Two, one, two? And she already left in Mariah Lynn. But like I said, Mariah Lynn also had a catch up, but it I, I don't think we could actually play that. I think also the popular you could at least play, you know, you're still blanking out words, uh uh black yellow. Um, I don't think we can really play that on the radio for kids to be catchy talking about I'm a hoe and I admit it and get the the smack shit down. And, you know, I'm just yeah, I yeah, I can see why to a certain point, you know. Um that, that didn't go too well. Okay, so um even though it was a popular song, whatever, as far as YouTube views and stuff. So, uh, we see her. She was working on music, and she got by. This looked like some sign of pool. I thought they were like in a pool, like hotel. Maybe I don't know what the heck was going on. And then she was talking to this girl, and some guy comes in. It was fine as hell. They, Mr. Fine, okay, should have been his name, okay. And she said she was working a lot. He's a rapper too. And then I mentioned he was fine. And then, then I mentioned he was fine. That's not her saying. That's my saying it because that's pretty much what stood out to me. You know was his finest. I don't know what rapping he's done, a record, whatever, but he's fine. He can model, you know. Not that, yeah, just, I'm, okay, I'm just saying, y'all see it for yourselves, you know, even if, if he ain't y'all preference, you know. But, but. <laughs> so anyways, I said like Safari, rest of the most get cast, but whatever, you know, they do some hands, man, but I'm just saying, he, that fine, you know, he fine. James, okay, fine James, okay, then, you know, okay. So, he comes to the pool, and I know she just kept like, not, not saying like straddle him, straddle him, but they just talking, and then you see another guy, according to, I'm just like, what type of private, it's so private pool, what's going on here, you just see we're like, they're like, kind of in the intimate mode, and it, besides the fact they got cameras there, you know, unless, you know, you did certain professions, with cameras that were somehow, <laughs> that, what I'm saying, in the terms of them, and still having an intimate moment, and then you got some girls on the side, and it's not really a big ass pool, you got over there. And she's talking, and he buys her necklace, and he said he likes her. And, you know, even Riley was mentioned, like, you know, they got together, connected, you know, blah, blah, blah. They went some of the same stuff, you know, through, you know, that they're growing up or whatever, so they can relate to each other. And even she reminds us that he's fine. I agree. So she's thinking about, you know, we keep giving her gifts and stuff, you know, these diamonds, you know, he might even walk up. So she's talking about her showcase for the new song, which we really didn't hear it. And I think I fast forward, so I don't know if they said music from the cast, but... I don't, I, it was too, it was too soon to also say whether or not it was a good song or not, or it was going to be catchy, or it's going to go anywhere, but she was letting me know, like, you know, my premiere, and he has a problem with DJ Self, he's even questioning, he's even questioning, like, what is her, you know, her situationship, whatever, or, you know, or really her status with DJ Self, or basically, she think, he's thinking, like, DJ Self, you know, was crossing the line, you know, she's like, we're just friends, with friends, and that's like a brother to me, and he's my boss, but you know, don't be that type of way. Which we see next week is interesting that he's, of course, paranoid, but turned out he up there smashes a broad too. Another broad. So, um, yeah. So they have a little event. DJ Self is there, and her and she comes in there, and she looks like with pink hair version of Little Mermaid in real life, because she damn sure she got a damn pink ass sequence bra on, looking like under the sea. And got a damn green sequence damn skirt on and got the pink, like, look like an ombre, but it's on top, real pink, kind of a little bit, about between the same colors, my hair and shirt, whatever, a little dark and all, and brown, but I mean, I'm just saying, she was giving, you know, era, um, um, kiss the girl now, so, what, you know, you remember, if y'all been watching a little more, but y'all know the damn soundtrack, so anyway. They're about to be, you know, they're talking about, DJ Self had to, I guess, introduce, um, uh, Mariah Lynn. You know, and nobody else in the cast was there at this premiere from Mariah Lynn's thing at all. Maybe she, they might show she has a friend next week. I don't know, shit. But it's just was just her. Then uh, she was on there, and now you know, thank you. I don't know, you know how she talk. And then all of a sudden, he's like this. You know, I just want to thank everybody. You know, my my baby, thank you for believing her. Blah blah blah. And you know, just, you know, DJ Self's like cut it. And he had, you know, basically. You know, cut off the silence volume off his uh, uh, the microphone. So after that, I guess they played the song. You know, they cut to 
DJ Self, you know, um, find James decided to go over there and talk to DJ Self. And he's questioning, basically checking him about, you know, because he felt some type of way. Yeah, so he wanted to talk to him. And already, because DJ Self already cut off his microphone and stuff like that. So it already be, I don't know what he wants to bring up, so whatever I talked to him. So he's basically checking, like, questioning, like, what is his status with his girl, you know, I don't basically, like, I don't like you, and he's like, you're not even taking a word, I could take her, that's what Brian James is telling the DJ self, he's like, okay, you sound like you, you know, you can do some more with him, blah, 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 and, you know, they basically go back and forth or whatever, you know, and not the point, like, you know, I'll fight you, what's up, blah, 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 but it is just going on back and forth, like, you know, you got James saying, like, you know, what you doing for a question, like, you know, what is DJ James, if he's smashing or trying to smash or whatever, his girl. She had, you know, Mariah Lane had to get her little tiny, teeny, tiny self on the table, uh, to the table to stand on the table and say, like, you know, to James, like, since he wasn't less listen to him when she went over there to talk to them, because, you know, DJ Self was one table, and he right next to the other table to talk, you know, on the side side there. But, you know, I noticed that he really didn't know it was be security, or even though they were talking, it wasn't like, like I said, it was just really an argument, but not to a point where you could tell it was about to be a possible fight, which it wasn't. Because Mario Lynn was even standing like, well, you need to talk, this is my boss, he pays my bills. And Jay, fine, James feels some type of way, like, okay, you supposed to be my man, basically. You know, I'm supposed to be your man, and you up here taking this nigga's side. So blah, blah, blah. And he kind of walks off. So the last story is here. Little Mo, for her to be a part of the cast, and what's this new thing now, if y'all know this, with these damn shows, that they wait to damn near the third or fourth or twelfth episode of the season before they bring in certain cast members. I'm confused. Okay, because we've seen damn near everybody else now, except her, okay? So, um, Ananis, we see her, she's, you know, taking photographs, because she's like, basically, her marriage is in a spreader, I'm like, we can kind of pretty much tell that, okay, look like your daddy was taking you uh, outside to your first club, and you just turned 18, he said you better be home by two, uh, one, okay, uh, but anyways, um, she's taking photos, trying to take less of and not veto, not veto, uh, you know, again, she continues to flirt with, because when the rich dollars comes, Narvita wants her help, I guess, manager or something like that because, you know, that they're the frat brothers, blah, 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 to help us are. So as soon as Rich Dollars gets there, she's already, you know, finished doing her first suit. And she's just like this, like, oh, so are we going to do a threesome in the forest? Because she already, even before, it was just like, oh, my gosh. It's, she's too much. Like I said, she's talented, but as far as the mouth, as far as, like, she's talking, I'm like, if she was always like this in marriage because she made it when she married her, uh, her uh, husband almost um, looked like to be confused as her dad. That's how, you know, the difference is, okay? Um, well, she's 20 years old, and based on Wikipedia information, I think she's, you know, 33. So I'm like, is this, like, coming out of escape, or does she always have, like, a personality just, like, you know, just take all of this, okay? <laughs> so, um, after they were talking for a second, you know, like I said, thinking about working work for work with her, with her, whatever, I mean, as far as with Dallas, and even if she flirted, because even Rich, I was like, my gosh, you know, like, when she's talking about having a freezer in the forest, me, like, the hell? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, even he was kind of take by back, Rich was, okay? So, but they just talking a little bit about the business and about meeting with each other somewhere, I mean, having me, I think, brought, and also, you know, her and her problem with Ashley or something like that, they Ashley got be, I think, like, either Rich Dollars or the Navarro said it himself, about Ashley, and she was like, well, mm, mm, I'm not Ashley, whatever, and Ronald was like, you know, y'all do have to work together, and it's like, she gets irritated, and it turns out, not only she called, she texts him, but she texts him photos, and it's like, not for, I'm thinking it's like, maybe the photos, which is already, she, the swimsuit, you, you know, damn, they see everything, okay, but, not, you know, but, um, she, it turns out later on in the episode, we find out that she's sending nude ass pictures and stuff like that, like, oh, girl, uh, the hell? And I understand maybe because it's the first time I a female artist, but she's doing the most. Yeah, she's made talented, but what what do they call it? like a PR person, whatever she needs to probably talk to or something. If if this really is what's going on. Uh uh. Uh uh. Mm -mm. So yeah, but she's just like she just flirting to get what she wants. Okay, then what you trying to get then? Cause if you had to show news or whatever, like I said, she's talented. She has you know, I'm just saying is is is, is, is she she, like I said, she didn't have gotten awards, been nominated for, you know, some awards, so it's not like, uh, she has to go to that extreme 
just to do that. I mean, unless she's been since she's been out the house and just went all wild and shit. Okay, and this is what we got. And he's not really telling her to stop the bullshit neither. He can say no as well, you know, instead of flirting back in the string thing about her sending some that. Okay. So we have another scene we meet Ashley. Ashley, I think they work for models or have like some type of image organization or something, I mean, a consultant for, I, I don't know. But one of her main clients is her sister. And she's talking to, about, he's calling, he said he was going to make have a meeting. But again, it's it means she's on her niece. And that's when we find out like, you know, how I feel about her, blah, blah, blah. Because he was on the way to pick up the kids. They both have kids from previous relationship and they're just co-parent, you know, and work together and blend in. And she like, you know how I feel about her ass. And he's like, okay, we'll just cancel the meeting. And she decides to go talk to sister. It's like, you know what? You know, you got to draw the line. Because that's what she missed to her sister and like every other model in the damn room. That, you know, she's been sending inappropriate photos, you know, and calls them to forward more. I think she also said that in the so-called meeting whatever. So we got it where she ends up, you have the big ass chair, you know, rotating around usually. Or a surprise or evil ass villain or something in the James Bond movie or some shit. That pops up and be like, ha, 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 or whatever. When she turned around thinking it was not, not she purposely, she was supposed to cancel it, but she decided to go her own self, you know, to put the rules down. Because she said her and Aunt Anise used to be cool. And when Aunt Anise probably talking about, you know, dang, you know, I wish I could rock, probably uh, uh, straddle your man or something, whatever the hell she said, knowing her. Um, that probably went down the hill. So she's like demanding the respect, even though she wants to take. So she is trying to say, well, here's Aunt Anise's defense. It's like, okay, you're the girlfriend, whatever, and I'm just like, if I'm sending text stuff like that, whatever, like, I'm just uh, trying to secure, you know, make sure he checks, like, you don't pay me well, but she's like, they do work together and have a business together, and you are going to respect me, stuff like that, so then the bitch got a bitch, and I didn't need, actually wasn't, again, it's like you see arguments, and even to go as far as, like, the words get out there, you have to see confrontation, and blah, blah, basically got to the point where Ash is about to go over there, and on these kind of just walk out, and that security, okay, so blah, 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 so we have another guy, I think his name's Jacques or Jacoy. I'm about to get that child's name mixed up with that, that boy that sings that song, B-E-D. Uh, okay, and Parpoose has him in the beginning, and he has a song with him, and he followed, uh, had followed a video, so they decided to work with him. And his friends also were Bree and Brianna, Bri, uh, Bri Taylor, whatever, right? I just got to run this real quick for all because like I said, sorry about the rant. But here, but here's the interesting part. That Brianna said, that I even had to look at that bitch sideways on this. Now, they have a part where first you talk to Britt Taylor, because he's trying to get their sides when he heard this. And she explained, you know, her side. She do the shoot. She's always trying to be me. And they used to be friends for 10 whole years. Because what I found out, I think it was somebody comments, like, with Ashley was somebody that said, like, how they all know each other. Like, web stars work with, I guess, for all three of them. But um, they're referring to, like, uh, Britt, uh, Brianna, uh, Bianca, Brianna, uh, Bianca, Brianna, Bianca first with the song, um, Chicken Noodle Soup, then Brit was, what, another song, he was trying to make, like, another hit with, with her or something, and then it just fell down here, as we see now, so, she's basically saying, like, I'm just sick of this stuff, but I could have sworn, but maybe I, I changed the channel, but I didn't know whether, since she's willing to try to talk to her or something like that, but definitely, he's just trying to see if he get his friends, because they used to be cool as hell, all together, and he doesn't see that, you know, and 10, you know, they're 10 years ago and stuff, whatever the time, you know, people change. So he meets Brianna. Even she got to sit there and got reminded, oh, you got me at a coffee shop and, you know, I don't drink coffee. Okay, they serve tea there. What the, what the, I don't know. She just was a little agitated, okay? So he's all talking about, he talked to Bree and said they can talk to each other. And she said she, her dad just had surgery or something, on a surgery on his foot. And, you know, he's suffering diabetes. And Jack, Jack Quay, you know, dad has died. Uh, complications, or, or I mean, I don't, I forgot, I don't know what they said with the illness, no, but they did say they both were dialysis, both dads, but John Cleese got rest his dad's soul, had passed away, so it was kind of like, he was adopted by Bree's, uh, Bri, Bri's, uh, Bianca's, uh, family, okay, so, he's talking again, he's trying to say, let's crease the peace and stuff, you know, and he's like, y'all gonna still be 80 years old, arguing back for, because she's just like, you know, I don't want to talk to her, if I had, she had to let us know the price tag, of the $1,700, dollars shoot, not doing it at you, blah, 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 because he's just like, you know, y'all ain't got to do this, or whatever, you know, basically, and she got her mind, well, I don't think she's gonna talk, because, you know, I screwed you, but she don't want to go start stuff, so, you know, it's she said, she said, she said, and he's like, like I said, he just wants it to calm down, and she had to remind us, like, and in the way she kind of said something, and I'm just like, you know what? When she said this, because she like, 
I don't care. Even God told me uh, to talk with her. I can't even talk to that. Okay, we're not going to say the same sentence. I, I personally feel like I'm just saying, like, he, she basically, like, basically, you no, know, okay, it's not, uh, <laughs> that's a whole nother video, even if I feel like getting in that, in that video, in a video like that. But I'm like, I believe God, whatever. And if you feel like some people mm, uh, believe that God can talk, to, you know, speak to you, get messages, stuff like that. So you mean to tell me you believe in God, and if God was to give you a sign or message or directly have a way of talking to you and said for you to do something and you want to be disobedient, but you want to say big fat to like, even if did God tell me, I blah, blah, blah. Oh, my girl, you could just say, you know, oh, my mama or my dad could tell me to speak to her and I still want to take to her. I'm just like, I don't know. I just kind of, I don't know, maybe it's just me personally, but I'm just like, oh, really? And she just stormed off whatever. But it's like, again, how they talking about getting this money, stuff like that. And we can already tell Brit, Brianna, B, 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 Brit, 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 Brianna, Bianca, B, 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 B. Okay. Uh, I want to, it's just going to be a storyline. Like I said, I like the Bianca kind of some of the first season, but it's like, is she known for, you know, getting her up inside just like an agitated way to pop off? And that's what I'm going to start calling the Miss Pop Off chick and shit like that. So, because like I said, you uh, after that, I'm just like agitated. So we'll see. Uh, she's kind of just agitating me a little bit whatever <laughs> but anyways y'all uh hugs and loves i will see y'all next video i'm done i kind of stretch this out the video just kind of mumbled a little bit like i said i'm tighter and i'll see y'all next video yeah i even said tato i was meant to say tired <laughs> but anyway y'all i will see y'all the next one hugs and loves but how y'all feel the seasons i know it's just season two but you know you know maybe after a couple episodes of start this uh it more interesting, I guess. <laughs> well, at least we didn't have a phone that you didn't have no cord and no shit like that this time. But like I said, Alicia show with Judy, she able to get the phone calls for Omar. Um, man, DC, I kind of wonder what is she doing? Go Instagram at every event that Yandy has, she's just gonna follow supposedly. And I'm that's what I'm saying. Yandy might start to have a big ass photo and tell people don't let her in. If that's the case, if she's really messing up your brand like that and bringing in a uh, Muppet throw up quilts and all this shit and telling you, you need to put this on and if she's trying to throw hands on your artist, mm-mm, mm-mm. Anyway, y'all, hugs and love. See y'all next video. I'm out.